Hi ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we are trying two very interesting wines from Pereshat's Peninsula and, and I am fond of Pereshat's Peninsula but there's actually another reason why we're trying these two wines today. Um, the winery is Ben Mosh or Ben Moshe, uh, family winery, um, actually American owned winery. Uh, Mr. Robert Ben Moshe came to Croatia a few years back, 2006 I believe and uh, uh, was very, very interested in, in uh, the local terroir and local wines. He started a, a winery that I'm going to be put a few more uh, bits of information about uh, on our website. But uh, the reason why we're trying these two is that today is the inauguration of the new American president and not to go into political spheres. Um, these two wines were actually shipped over to the United States and will be appearing somewhere along the lines of the uh, um, a regular protocol of the inauguration uh, ceremony. So uh, somewhere in that whole uh, mess of activities, uh, these two Croatian wines are going to be served and enjoyed um, by the people that are celebrating the inauguration of the new American president. So very interesting uh, uh, point, very interesting story and a nice uh, promotion of Croatian wines, which uh, we are working so hard to promote and then he come, here comes this guy who's going to be a president and then he has the power to promote them way more than us who are working very hard for years to do so but yeah we'll take it uh the two wines we are uh actually tasting today are a bowl uh our Pereshats, uh sorry our uh, dingach from uh Pereshats peninsula more uh precisely dingach appellation um very very interesting appellation i talked about already but just to summarize the first protected uh, appellation in croatia um, very very interesting terroir steep hills going all the way down to the sea a lot of sunshine a lot of uh, circulation of the air from the sea the triple insulation um, very hot uh, very rugged area difficult to work on uh, very rarely there can be any mechanization used but uh, producing very uh, um, rich, usually medium to full-bodied uh, red wines uh, with quite a bit of bite. Um, and the second wine we're trying is uh, Zinfandel. Actually, um, Croatia is the homeland of the Zinfandel according to the latest research. Um, although we don't call it Zinfandel here, we call it Srljena or Tribidrag. But um, it's a very, very... Um, it's not that usual for us to have a lot of choice when it comes to Zinfandel because this guy Plavac Mali overtook it um, a few hundred years back because it uh, gives better yield and better results in this climate uh, but Zinfandel is now making a comeback especially since we know that for now we're treating Zinfandel or internationally as a Croatian variety so um, we're diving straight in I'm here with Sine Shalasan and Ksenia Matic, two people that know their wine, uh, so I'm going to behave. Um, and we're starting right off with Dingach, which is a medium plus, um, medium plus intensity uh, color, uh, ruby, uh, predominantly ruby. Um, and uh, on the nose, we're expecting a big wine, right? Yeah, uh, just by looking at it and swirling it in a glass, you see um, a high concentration and high viscosity. So um, the nose is clean, the um, intensity of the aroma is pronounced, and uh, when uh, you uh, do blind tastings in Croatia, and if you get Dingage, you, you, you rarely miss it for this bursting uh, uh, aromas of, of uh, uh, plum jam, of carob, of raisins, of uh, um, uh, dry fig. Yeah. Uh, then you have your touch of uh, this uh, like salty minerality, like dry algae, oh. uh, which is typical. Some even say like uh, uh, salty anchovies. It has this this characteristic uh, characteristical minerality, and uh, definitely uh, nice nicely um, uh, use of oak with mm. some vanilla 
and, and sweet baking spices, but not uh, overwhelming or, or disturbing anything in the wine. So very uh, rich and very complex on, on the nose, I would say. I would say as well, the same thing. On the palate, of course, wine is dry. It's uh, medium acidity alcohol level is uh, for sure medium plus tannin as well medium plus but tannin tannin is very smooth elegant you know mm -hmm. even fruity sweet tannin you know very pleasant uh, fruit pro profile on the palate I would agree with everything plus of course there is uh, this uh, vanilla I get maybe some slightly bit of uh, earthiness as well mm -hmm. it's very well balanced it's uh, actually. Uh, easy to drink, even we are talking about wine, which is, uh, for me, full-bodied, full-bodied red. I would say that this is actually a classic uh, sample of Dingach, uh, yeah. Yeah. but very well made, very, yeah. very well made. Uh, Dingach, 18 degrees of Celsius with, uh, from, let's say, uh, maybe, okay, you can choose either Bordeaux or Burgundy Red wine glass. I will go in this case maybe with uh, Burgundy Red. Uh, and decanted before, uh, serve it, uh, we can go as well with red meat, but uh, I would like to have this with cheese, even with, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, chocolate or something like that. I think that mm. this wine is actually excellent for this type of food as well. Mm. Uh, so, full body, excellent red wine. This is really, really excellent. Um, what do you think? Tradition, yeah, uh, the traditional... Uh, Dingach, and somebody says, sometimes it, very bold wine, sometimes too much, right? Traditionally, we have, you know, Dingach wines that can go in excess of 16% alcohol, you know, and sometimes a bit of residual sugar, very, very sort of dry. It's just like a jam. You feel you can spread it on a piece of toast, right? Uh, so this, I, I would say, and you guys tell me your opinion, but I would say this is sort of respecting traditional direction of Dingach. But it's it's crafted in a way that it's you know modern it, 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 it's yeah. modern wine making yeah it's not going to be offensive in any way it's still 15 percent alcohol which is but okay for Dingach nothing to uh, yeah as well I think that uh, it is for sure traditional wine making but this this year was uh, not too hot so this is why this wine is mm. I mean it's full body still it's rich yes, kind of everything but usually. As we know, this winery is making even more richer uh, red wines, but this this year was uh, not so hot. But as I said, this is uh, excellent made wine, and it's it is traditional for sure because we know that uh, family who is producing this wine is uh, traditionally making. Yes, traditional yes. Style this is definitely regardless of who owns the winery. This is a Croatian wine. It's not an American yes, wine, it right? It's it's very much in tune. Of sort of traditional Peljašac Peninsula terroir, which is, by the way, what made Peljašac Peninsula renowned in Croatia, but also, I think, uh, not just in Croatia. Uh, nice choice, I think. Yeah, uh, we're going on to Zinfandel, um, and we're going to be discussing this 15.5 percent Zinfandel next, and we're back with uh, Ben Moshe, family winery Zinfandel, 2013, 15.5% alcohol, um, a, bit of, uh, um, a bit of aging signs on the color, but actually very, very much live uh, um, ruby, expressive ruby color, with just a hint of uh, garnet uh, going cl coming close to it. But, uh, ooh, on the nose, very interesting beast indeed. What do you think, Xenia, on the rose? Yeah, here um, the fruit is quite wow. pronounced with a combination of red and, and um, black. Uh, fruit is definitely of, of a ripe, ripe character. Uh, so we can single out uh, uh, cranberries, uh, blackberries, um, mm. uh, even some uh, uh, red currant for mm. me. Um, Plum gem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is as well some oak oak aromas. You know, yes. you said it, uh, like vanilla and baking spices, and uh, but it's uh, on the nose. It's very rich and uh, 
It's pro German, but as well, there is some earthy minerality. I have it, and if you see that the wine is uh, a bit more aged. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you can. But it didn't lose this. Uh, it didn't lose the fresh. primary fruit, yeah, fruit yeah. aromas. It, they are still here and very persistent. It's it's really nice. Um, right on the palate. It's dry. I'd say medium plus acidity, um, medium plus medium or medium plus tannins, but very soft. Mm. Yeah, 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 very well integrated. Uh, not biting at all. Um, a lot of, uh, again, red fruit on the palate for me. Uh, some, of course, uh, sweet, sweet spices. Um, excellent balance, uh, long finish. Uh, very, very nice and actually very um, soft. Mm. For, it's, for, soft. it's very juicy. It's easy yeah, juicy. And a lot of these uh, fresh, fresh fruit still on the palate. Mm, doesn't matter if it's seven years old wine for yeah. the moment. But the is eight. quite, quite. Uh, let's say for seven year old wine, quite high. Let's say and uh, alcohol is uh, let's say medium plus. Uh, Tannin level is uh, medium, maybe not yeah, so high. Yeah, medium, medium, but they're really, really nice. But it's very well integrated in in, yeah. in the whole wine. And actually, I think that this wine. Can uh, age a few more years for sure. Yeah, I was going to ask you your opinion. I think yeah. uh, um, this one is is ready to to drink, but I think it definitely can go a bit more. I mean, 2013. I, I don't know if I would give it. Well, I think there are some aromas that indicate aging, but uh, definitely a, a very much very you know still sort of fresh. And yeah, still very given, much alive. given the structure, the acidity is here, tannin, tannins are here, alcohol is here. Um, it has all things you need to to go to go longer. Yeah, mm. for me, I mean, it reminds me of like um, like Rioja. You know? Uh -huh. you know this fruit profile and tannin level, acidity. You know, and I think this wine can age for sure. Let's say three to five years more. Without yeah. a doubt, without a doubt. Yeah. Very interesting, uh, Zinfandel, we never got around to food pairing for uh, uh, um, the previous one, Dingach, but Dingach usually does well with high, uh, high uh, protein, high fat foods. Yeah. Uh, it does have the tannic uh, structure to, to really handle high uh, protein food, uh, tannins do well with protein. Um, but I'm actually more interested in, 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 in Zinfandel because we don't get a lot of them. Um, food pairing for something as rich as this. Um, is this Would you pair this with food or would you just enjoy it on your own if you have it at home? What's, where do you guys stand? And this is now just subjective. What do you like? Do you like when you have a wine like this? This wine is, is, is it's, it's very nice. It's a bit special. So uh, do you like pairing it with food because it can go well with a lot of food of course uh, exactly no or do you like to enjoy it on its own well, you can enjoy it on its own for sure because it's excellent wine and after you know when it's uh, after dinner you can enjoy a bottle or two of this wine for sure mm -hmm. but uh, for me pairing i would like to pair it with a suboko i think it will be fantastic mm -hmm. with a suboko nice. Yeah, I was also going with some some uh, meat in in a, a sauce maybe with with a bit of lift of acidity, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. some some type of meat with cranberry sauce okay, or, or okay. similar. So maybe even something along the lines of wild game. Yeah. Nice. Um, I I hmm, maybe venison or or something like yeah. wild boar. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of options here. Uh, both wines, I think, very, very, uh, I think they stand the test. Whoever gets to drink them <laughs> at the inauguration, I think, is not going to be uh, disappointed at all. In fact, this might do wonders for uh, promoting uh, Croatian wine in some of the circles we rarely get to promote. Um, I don't want to do any sort of rating or anything like that, but just uh, for yourself. Is there, a, out of these two, is there a wine you prefer or uh, just, you know, sort of like more than the other or? In personally, no, I no, no, because I think both wines are well made and actually this is how this wine is supposed to look like. Mm. This is like mm. uh, uh, preference, uh, personal preference of, of, 
uh, wine lover, but as you know, I, I love to taste a lot of wines and drinks, so I don't, <laughs> I, I like both of them. Right, yeah. Xenia? Well, yeah, I, I, I must agree because uh, they are um, uh, so much different yet so, yet similar hmm. because they are both well made, they are both bold red yeah. wines, yeah. but again, you are looking at only appellation in Croatia, yeah. Yeah. Dingac and all its characteristics and the terroir, and then this Zinfandel which is, uh, uh, you know, brought home. Yeah, yeah, you know, from right, the state, right. but definitely um, made in, in in such a nice soft way uh, that you would never uh, think that it's 2013 and that it's 15.5. Uh, yeah. You're right. I um, I don't want to now that these guys haven't told you their favorite. I'm not going to tell you my favorite, uh, but I think we all agree that they are both. When we say favorite, we don't mean there we would get way more points to one than the other. I think these are both highly uh, uh, rated wines for a reason. Uh, but I'll tell you what I like. I, I like the fact that, that they have kept the traditional spirit of Dingach in Dingach. And I like the fact that this is a very, very serious Zinfandel coming out of Croatia. Uh, I think this is whenever you you know, whenever we have guests here, we have a lot of guests coming from, um, from United States. Uh, in search of Croatian food and wine, and they are all a lot of them are very interested, of course, in trying local Zinfandel. I think this is one of those that a lot of people are going to come back for and, and maybe order uh, to take home with them as well. Uh, right, uh, Ben Moshe, congratulations on your uh, 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 lovely promotion in the United States. Uh, but uh, for the three of us, uh, we're going to remain here and probably finish these two bottles if you don't mind. See you guys later.